Welcome to World at Work TV. I'm Allison Avalos, and I'm joined today by Robin J. Suthasan from Willis Towers Watson, and we're talking about performance management and some of the changes that we're seeing there. Robin, certainly a lot of the changes that are being widely reported, but not necessarily the most prevalent practices as of yet, have been covered widely in the news. Talk a little bit about the business and talent climate that might be contributing to some of these changes. It's been really interesting to watch the excitement that's built up over the course of the last couple of years as large prominent organizations have in some cases done a complete 180 on their performance management philosophies. And, and I think what's driving it from a business perspective, recognizing that our need to innovate is probably greater than it's ever been. After many rounds of focus on cost as we came through the last recession and recognizing how severe that was, and I think a recognition that the incremental changes that we had grown accustomed to and had taken for granted in the period before the last recession, so think of that period from 2000 to 2008, um, which gave rise to the performance management constructs that we have today, um, really are, are going to be insufficient. We need more revolutionary change. We need a growth mindset, as Carol Dweck and others have called it. And that's prompting organizations to step back and say, does this foundational system for so much of our HR architecture, that is performance management, is it actually getting in the way? We know it's been a point of frustration and a point of pain for managers and leaders. Um, is it also, in fact, stifling our ability to grow? Um, and I think that's one of the business factors driving it. I think you ally to that the rise of the different demographics in the workforce today. I think in some organizations we've seen there are actually four generations at the same company. And what the millennials, the, 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 the Gen, y, uh, Gen Yers, if you will, take for granted in terms of their social lives, how they engage more seamlessly in terms of feedback, um, their conversations are less uh, less burdened with lots of data and process. They want feedback quickly. And so you're seeing that other dimension being brought to the table of, you know, why can't performance management operate with many other things we take for granted in our personal lives? Should an organization uh, be responsive to its workforce and its business goals as it looks to sort of morph into the future of, of performance management? Starting with, with its workforce, I think, looking at the demographics you have at the organization, understanding fully what your employees' expectations are. And I think most organizations generally do, generally do a good job of that. It's the business dimension that, that I think often requires a little bit more thought and inquiry, if you will, because asking yourself, what is the path to our growth going forward? What is the type of mindset that we want to create among our leaders and our talent? So if I am a an organization that is really focused on managing um, variance and, and ensuring a high quality of my product, then the mindset I, I have is one maybe of minimizing variance. Um, that's going to call for a very different performance architecture than perhaps if I'm an organization that is, um, that has a, if I'm an investment bank with a bunch of um, guys who are producers, who are, who are out doing deals that performance management architecture looks very different versus if I'm a technology company and I'm focused on developing new products, et cetera, in a more agile environment. I want collaboration, I want co-creativity, I want people working together, and that performance management architecture looks different. I think it's really important for organizations to step back and ask themselves, what are we trying to accomplish with our business model going forward? What is the mindset we need to engender? What is the culture that needs to underpin that? And frankly, you know, what does performance management need to look like? Do we want to reward? Do we want to recognize um, inputs versus outputs? Do we want to encourage teamwork versus individual behavior? Um, and how does that, how do those behaviors vary by different employee segments based on the type of work? And I often find that organizations don't often go through that rigorous understanding of what the business model is going to call for. And, and we've seen a number of organizations, particularly over the last two years, some who have maybe followed the bandwagon on rating lists, as an example, start to realize some of the unintended consequences because it may not have been the right thing given their particular business model. How can a truly effective 
performance management system positively affect employee engagement and ultimately productivity? I, I think going back to my initial comment about performance management being such a foundational process, it's, it's a process that maybe touches, of all the HR and management processes, I think it touches employees the most, the most often over the course of a year. Um, in addition to any engagement they might have with their managers, it is absolutely instrumental in driving that engagement because it becomes um, a tool for communicating what the organization values. It becomes a tool for pointing people in the right direction. It becomes a tool for getting people to understand how they, how they are part of the larger whole. And in many organizations, you know, it's linked to development and compensation, et cetera. So its impact on engagement is, is truly huge, um, both directly and indirectly, because you know, what our leaders say certainly affects employees' engagement, how our leaders behave, and the messages they send through performance management, some might argue, sends an even stronger message, because be, it's more of the, it's the walk versus the talk, if that makes sense. Um, so I think it has a very significant impact on engagement. Do you see an increase in terms of um, the emphasis from the employee perspective and their desire to be assessed, receive feedback, and some of it this is aligned with some of these emerging practices we're hearing about, but is there a, an underlying shift there as well in terms of what employees need and expect as well as what's happening at the organizational level? Absolutely. Um, you know, I, I just did a speech on the future of work and how it's evolving rapidly. Employees expect to be at organizations, at many organizations over the course of their career. They're looking for growth and development and, and feedback is essential to that. Um, we're seeing more and more of our employees ask us for, tell me what I need to improve, tell me what I need to do to sort of move up to the next level and contribute more and have skills that continue to be relevant. Um, and I think the emphasis, this emphasis that we're seeing on continuous feedback access to development, um, identifying how I can grow and close my developmental gaps, really ties into a broader shift that we're seeing with organizations, starting to move from a value proposition of providing employment for a long period of time to increasingly saying, we will develop you for opportunity, either within the organization or without. And, and I think our millennials are driving some of that, some of that interest in give me the feedback, give me the opportunity, because I, I don't just want to be ready for the next position here, I want to be ready for the next position that might come elsewhere. One of these emerging practices we've touched on is ratingless reviews. Talk a little bit about what that actually means um, and kind of how you see that developing into the future. That's a great question because there have been so many organizations who have gone ratingless and they all look a little bit different. One of the biggest misnomers is that there is no assessment of performance and that couldn't be further from the truth. You just don't have a summary rating. There is nothing that says, Alison, you're a three and Robin, you're a two. Um, what you have instead is a much more nuanced and arguably a more sophisticated definition of performance. It's still asking the question of what did you contribute last year? But in many organizations, the questions of have you developed yourself so that you can actually contribute in the future? Have you, are you in fact gonna to continue to be relevant to our business model? Are you exhibiting the behaviors of a leader? So the competencies that many have talked about and used in their developmental processes. So you've got, in most organizations have gotten ratingless, a loosening of the reins, if you will, to give managers more discretion, to recognize that people are growing and contributing in different differential ways, and we need to recognize that. One of my worries has been that a lot of the other more positive changes have been clouded or maybe sort of put into the shadows by the, the move to rating lists. You know, the points we made about feedback, the points about access to development, the point about ensuring that we've got agile goal setting, all of those are much, much more important than just the rating list um, issue, which is frankly just the absence of a summary rating. And I think you saw some of that with Goldman Sachs's recent transformation that was in, on CNN, and the fact that they've done a lot of these other things but they've still retained some form of rating. Um, so they've gotten many of the benefits. And I think, um, as we've seen with organizations who maybe have, as I said a second ago, experienced the unintended consequences of going ratingless, I think you know, some of what Goldman has done is, is, is just very thoughtful. Sounds like we're sort of scratching at the surface of some of this evolution in performance management. What do you think is on the horizon, and how can HR professionals prepare for that? Um, 
I think what we're going to see is continued segmentation of the performance management process. We talked about there being four generations at work today. I think we're going to see a myriad more types of different work relationships, whether than employ employees, contingent labor, alliance partners, outsourced talent, and what does performance management need to look and feel like for each of them. And then I think there is also just the nature of the work that's being done. If I'm a uh, talent in a sales type role versus in a more production role, what does that need to feel like? And so I think it's this broader theme of customization and segmentation of performance management. So moving away from that one size fits all process. Thanks, Robin. Oh, my pleasure. For Weld at Work TV, I'm Allison Avalos.